Sup guys, Youth Pastor Alex here, and I have a question for you. What do you think is the most controversial Christian thing today? Do you guys think it's those mega churches where the pastor asks for millions for their private jets? Or maybe it's those bigoted churches like Westboro Baptist Church. Or you might think it's the fact that the Bible 2, where Jesus is riding a unicorn, dual wielding M60s, shooting lasers from his eyes, is not biblically canon. Oh. All those things are very controversial, or sad really. But today we're going to be talking about the most recent controversy, which is Kanye West. But you know what? I really think he's the vibe check we Christians all needed. Kanye West is one of the most influential and polarizing artists of our time. Whether you love him or hate him, you will certainly have trouble ignoring him. George Bush doesn't care about chemicals in the water that turn the friggin' frogs gay! While we all know him to be primarily full of himself in a general sense, he has also caused plenty of trouble by hijacking Taylor Swift's VMA's acceptance speech which would be later followed by the song Famous, that mentions that he and Taylor might still have sex because he made that a uh, strong independent woman famous. However, he should never want to have sex, even in marriage, because virginity rocks. Ah, oh, I forgot I was married. How to regain virginity. There's so much talk about Kanye's controversies, and to be honest, I'm sick of hearing about it. That crap is over and done with. And it may surprise you, but I love Kanye and all his music. My silly Christian appearance may fool you to believe that I only listened to Switchfoot, Reliant K, or As I Lay Dying before we found out that the band lied about their Christianity and the singer was trying to hire a hitman to kill his wife. Jeez, and I thought my sexual temptations for my wife were bad. Before we can talk about the new Kanye, we have to talk about the old Kanye. <laughs> I just told you who I thought I was, a poopy head. For those that didn't know, Kanye West actually grew up Christian. And despite the secular nature of his music, the songs Jesus Walks and Through the Wire were just only the first two expressions of faith from the start of his music career. This accident is God saying, I'm about to hand you the world. Just know at any given time, I could take it away from you. So always keep me first. The story of Through the Wire is about Kanye's life-threatening car accident that caused Kanye's jaw to be wired shut throughout multiple surgeries, and how Kanye recorded his vocals with his jaw still wired shut. Babe, that sounds so scary. Hold me. <coughs> While looking at the new Kanye, it appeared his relationship with Christ had lessened at best or had become non-existent at worst. However, if you can make it past the drugs, lack of virginity, and bleached buttholes, there were still moments in his music that indicated that his relationship was still there. Songs like Ultralight Beam, which a version made it into the Jesus is Born Gospel album, which is more fire than the Jesus is King regular album. The song is about how no matter how difficult things make it, he has always been able to look towards God and know that we gon' be alright. But without a doubt, the meaningful message became unclear and misaligned when almost every other song seemed to negate it. However, I do believe that the album The Life of Pablo was Kanye's turning point. The meaning behind The Life of Pablo was Kanye's triality, yeah google that, fight me, between three different Pablos throughout history. Pablo Picasso, which is Kanye's desire to create art, Apostle Paul, which is Kanye's desire to pursue and glorify Christ, and Pablo Escobar, which is Kanye's temptation to sell his earthly product for his own gain. And after listening to the album multiple times, it may appear that Picasso and Escobar are the winners of Kanye's pursuits on the surface, but we know that with Jesus as king, that Apostle Paul ends up winning in the end. With Kanye West's debut of Jesus is King and Jesus is Born, it was a clear statement that he was now going to fully live for Christ. However, with no surprise to anyone, Kanye was met with judgment and backlash from Christians more than anyone else. I know this personally because even I was judgmental towards him. And I think I know why Christians are so quick to wrongly doubt or judge in these circumstances. It's because of something called church hurt. That's my knee! Church hurt is a loose term for when a Christian's view of the world or their personal faith is damaged because of personal experiences. Something like a lead pastor resigning after being unfaithful to his wife, or things as simple as not feeling welcome or accepted by their peers. There could also be factors such as megachurch pastors being, you know, megachurch pastors. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. We wrestle not with flesh and blood but principalities and powers. Yeah, that dude looks straight up evil. While many Christians have experienced church hurt, it is absolutely not an excuse to be judgmental. We may not know for sure how genuine Kanye is with his faith, but it doesn't matter. It's not our job to determine that. It's our job to love him just like Christ loves every one of us. And it's that exact same love that brings us straight back to Apostle Paul. Yes, I am killing it with these segues. For those who don't know, Paul wasn't always Paul. He was known as Saul, which stood for secular Paul. Ooh, you stink! So why did I bring Paul up? 
It's because if God can change the heart of a guy that murders Christians, he can change the heart of a guy that raps about bleached buttholes. To summarize everything, I can't declare if Kanye is a genuine Christian or not, but it's not mine or anyone's job to do so. But I think this clip from his Jesus is King interview shows that at least there's been some resemblance of faith from the very beginning. I'm not just a musician. I'm a Christian revolutionary visionary products person. I ain't here to dance for you. I ain't here to do a two-step. Right. That's just a piece. That was just my end. And now I want to create. I want to create content. I mean, eventually, 10 years from now, I, wanna, I just want to create for the church, period. I'm Christian. I'm just going to die. I'm designed like the new, the new Sissy Chapel. Shut the fuck up. I will fucking laser you with alien eyes and explode your fucking head. So what was the point of this video? The point is, is that I'm dumb for judging someone's faith and that I think a lot of people needed some context about his upbringing and who he is and what his faith represents from the very beginning to the end. And not only that, I think what really summarized all of this up for me is that when I asked one of my Christian friends what he thought about the whole situation, he said, it doesn't matter because when Jesus is King dropped, a million people heard the gospel that otherwise wouldn't. And that's what kind of stuck with me. Anyways, guys, I really hoped you liked the video. And I'm going to link down the Jesus is King interview and also a really great documentary from Jay Aubrey. But anyways, if you like the video, maybe like and subscribe and stick around for Doom Eternal coming out later. And I'll see you guys next time. Stay hashtag blessed.